Hi, this is Mike from mikesgoodstuff.com, where I talk about good stuff, not just tech, but today we are talking about tech, because I have to catch up on telling you about all the new stuff going on in the Windows technical preview for Windows 10. Uh, for the last month I've been writing a book for NaNoWriMo, and this build happened during November. And, um, in fact, it was kind of a rough start for a while. Um, build 9879 came out in uh, mid-November, and it was really, really buggy. And, uh, well, basically, Microsoft released a patch uh, near the end of the month, um, which fixed a lot of problems. A lot of people are getting blue screens, uh, File Explorer was screwing up on them, um, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so, uh, now this build is, for the most part, pretty stable, as far as I can tell. Um, it is still one of the least stable builds that I've seen of Windows 10. A lot of people are still complaining about um, a lot of uh, various issues. Um, just part of the territory when you're talk when you're running beta software. Uh, as I said in previous videos, I don't really recommend running this on a <clears throat> full production machine. Um, there are a bunch of crazy individuals who have done that uh, for the purposes of reviewing it. Um, I am currently not because, uh, well, I don't just do tech review stuff. I do a lot of other things too with my computers. I don't want to screw everything up. Um, that said, this build seems pretty stable. Um, for those of you who will probably be questioning, yes, this is build 9879. Yes, I'm aware that build 9888 has also leaked out on the internet. Um, I'm not really going to be... Uh, I'll talk about what is in there, but I'm not really going to be reviewing it because, one, it's not official. Um, Microsoft has basically, has basically been... Um, dissuading people from downloading it, even though, by all rights, it seems like it's a pretty stable build, too. Uh, two, there's not a lot in there. Um, I'll just tell you right now, it, basically what they've done with um, 9888 is uh, in your PC settings, there was a little um, search box up here instead of just being here. So uh, the funny thing is, though, is that you hit the search box, and you search for something and it still pops up the charm just like normal so um, that's not a big deal uh, they've also done some things with uh, making the context menus um, a bit more unified so for instance you see the context menu here um, which shows you, you know, various different options um, and if, when you go into here you see that this is still a context menu that is very much tied to uh, Windows 8.1. Um, it's a new context menu style that they that they created, um, but doesn't have a lot of options in there. Um, apparently, they're changing it to a context menu that's closer along the lines of something like this. Um, I, once again, not a big deal. Um, I'm going to be waiting until an official build comes out uh, with those features before I really talk about it and demonstrate it. Um, I don't expect that to happen until January. Microsoft has, actually Microsoft said back in uh, mid-November when they released this, that this would be the last build that uh, they'll be doing for the year, and then they ended up updating it, so, you know, whatever. But, um, uh, we're expecting a consumer preview to come out sometime in January, which will have a lot more stuff, not just those three weird features, but a few other things as well. Um, so anyway, uh, let's talk about the changes they made in 9879. Uh, this has not been a very uproarious, you know, glorious update. Uh, this, this actually been, there are a few uh, welcome changes, but there is a lot of changes that a lot of people are complaining about, um, and rightly so. Uh, the, most, the most controversial change that's happened with 9879, and uh, it doesn't seem to be going any uh, going away. Uh, is that they've changed OneDrive dramatically? Um, when you download this build, there will be a new version of OneDrive that installs, and the first thing it's going to do is uh, 
Let's see, let's not do that. Um, the first thing it's going to do is ask you about what you want to sync in your um, in your OneDrive. So you can choose all files and folders in my OneDrive, or you can do selective sync, as I have done, where I'm seeking my music, uh, files not in a folder, uh, video files, and stuff like that, just for testing purposes. Um, however, you should probably know that it, when it says all files and folders in my OneDrive, do you want to sync this? Um, that means literally everything on your OneDrive is going to be downloaded to your computer. That's potentially a lot of stuff, and um, that is that is part of a new change that they've made to OneDrive in which um, what used to happen is that you could go into your OneDrive and uh, and you would see literally everything in here. Um, you wouldn't be able to access all of it because only some of it would be um, say uh, would be downloaded on your computer as an offline file and um, <clears throat> Um, a lot of it would be downloaded as a, uh, what they would call a, um, uh, was it a smart file or something like that? Um, a temporary file, which would have um, file information, such as what type of program it opens in, uh, thumbnail information, um, stuff like that. A lot of stuff that you're seeing here, or, um, it would have a lot of that in there. And um, so that you could actually see everything that's on your OneDrive, whether it's downloaded to your computer or not. Um, these these smart files would be uh, would take up a little bit of space, as they did have metadata, they did have uh, thumbnails, um, so it would take up a bit of space. Um, but it's, it was cool because you could see everything that was in there. You wouldn't have to go to OneDrive.com. You wouldn't have to go to a OneDrive app. You could see everything there within your file explorer and not have to worry about downloading all of OneDrive on your computer. Uh, they have changed that now. Um, and so now those smart files are not gone, with the only option being selective sync. So anything that you want to see on your OneDrive, on any computer, tablet that you own, um, with this build of Windows 10 going forward, you will have to uh, sync it to your, to your device. So that means every single device that you own, or every single uh, file on your OneDrive has to be synced, otherwise you won't even see it. Um, that's a monumental pain in the butt, and a lot of people are really pissed off about that. It, it's actually um, kind of removed one of the coolest things about OneDrive, in my opinion. Um, unfortunately, Microsoft has not really mentioned anything about, or has has been vocal in talking about that they're not going to change it back. They're not going to get rid of those files. Part of the reason they did it was because of, uh, I don't know, um, silly uh, executives or salespeople that would um, see a file on their OneDrive, would go on a business trip, and um, would be on the plane and try to access their file and not be able to because they don't have internet access and it was an on online only file. Um, I don't think this really solves that at all because then they'll be moving things to the OneDrive and then go to their com to their portable computer and not even see it there and be really confused. Um, and it also means that um, these small drive, small hard drive devices like the HP Stream um, running a 32 gigs, 64 gigs of memory will not be able to sync OneDrive. They'll not be able to see any of it. Um, so it's a weird response there. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they end up doing. Um, a lot of people have been very pissed off about this, uh, rightly so. And I have Microsoft has got to do something about this because that's just ludicrous. But that's one of the biggest changes with 9879, um, a change that I do not like at all. Currently, um, on my Surface, uh, which is running Windows RT, I can I can go to my OneDrive and see everything there, um, and you know I have a few hundred megabytes of uh, storage on my on my OneDrive at the moment, and I can see everything there without having it downloaded on my 64 gig um, Surface. Right now. 
um, I can tell you that my my OneDrive takes up the the files on there take up 34 gigs, um, but on the the files on the surface itself take up only about nine. So it's those smart files do take up a lot of space, and so I can understand why um, they might want to be sp uh, storage conscious by getting rid of those smart files. Um, but uh, it's still still annoying, you know. Anyway, so that's one change that you should note is uh, if you upgrade to this build or later builds of Windows 10, it will ask you to do selective sync, and if you don't do selective sync, you won't get anything in your OneDrive folder. So keep that in mind. Um, so they did some other stuff, though, of course. Um, there are a lot of welcome changes in addition to that one negative change. Um, so for instance, one thing I originally asked about when I saw these two icons, these two new icons, the uh, search and your task switcher, um, is at first they were not removable. You can do anything with them, you can't move them around, you can't, you know, if you click on this you can unpin it. Um, you still can't unpin it there, but you do have these two new options, show task view button and uh, show search button. So if you unclick this, it gets rid of it. So that is now something that you can disable or enable. Um, useful for people that are using desktop PCs because who the heck is going to use this on a desktop PC? I mean, really? You've got a keyboard, you know. Um, you can you can hit uh, you can hit Windows and start searching, um, and it does the same it does the same damn thing. So, um, but I'm keeping it there just for the purposes of testing. Um, but this might be more useful for people who have uh, tablets or touch devices and are using it primarily as touch. Um, it's an easier way to get to a search box. Um, same thing for task switcher. Uh, there are shortcut views or shortcut ways to get to task view, um, alt tab, windows tab, all that kind of stuff. Um, on a desktop PC, uh, a user might want to get rid of these just to save some space. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's good to have that option there. Um, so other than that, there have been a few other uh, UI changes. For instance, uh, this notification center has now been moved into the toolbar. Um, it was outside of it, just kind of sitting over here for a while. I initially figured that they would move it over here, and, and it appears they have. Um, so that, that makes sense. Um, about, I think about 10% of people will be getting a updated version of Internet Explorer, which will, um, which has like a, a new version of their, um, edge rendering engine. It's supposed to be faster. Um, I've not really seen a way to check whether you have that or not. Um, I haven't really noticed that this is any faster than anything else, so I probably don't. Um, but that's interesting. Um, there's also some more, some new uh, trackpad gestures uh, that I can't really display at the moment. Um, I have a trackpad on here, but it's not advanced enough. But uh, in any case, if you have a trackpad that supports uh, three finger um, three finger uh, gestures, as uh, mine does not, if you uh, swipe three fingers up, you'll get to your task view, which is this. Uh, if you do three fingers down, um, it will go to show desktop. So if you have a a window open here, it'll basically um, do this, minimize everything. Um, if you do uh, three fingers flick to the left or right, it will switch to your uh, previous uh, app, um, or it will switch switch between applications. So the same thing that uh, happens with a task switcher, but it just instead of opening up task view, it will just switch to each to each app. Um, uh, and so that's a three finger flick from left to right. Uh, if, a, if you do a longer move, three finger move left to right, uh, instead of a flick, um, alt tab appears. And then if you tap with three fingers, it'll open up 
the search charm or the search uh, not charm but search uh, menu here um, now one thing I do want to mention about that particular change is that uh, we've seen a lot of hints towards Cortana not only in this build but also in future builds that have been leaked by uh, various places like Win Beta and stuff like that uh, that are not publicly available at the moment um, as I suggested in earlier videos, I bl uh, it looks like this search button will inevitably be turned into Cortana. Um, right now they have these trending now things, uh, recent searches, um, and stuff like that. Um, there's a, some search settings that you can go through. Um, there's not a lot in there right now, but... Um, it looks like from future builds that I've seen leaked um, but are not publicly available, Cortana will go right here. And that's going to be really interesting because uh, with a three finger tap, you can open up Cortana and have it start and potentially have it start uh, searching or uh, listening to you. So that means a lot of the, um, uh, so that means the, the Windows phone like capability to hold down on the search button and uh, Cortana will start listening to you and you can say a command will be coming to Windows based computers and tablets as well. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool, that's exciting. Um, but let's get into some, some of the meat and potatoes here. There's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of stuff in this build. Um, I've just gone through a couple of the minor changes, um, philosophy change, or uh, some of the, the stuff we're seeing uh, philosophically about Windows 10. But um, one of the most interesting things I've noticed is, um, or one of those interesting things about this build is this new Z PC settings. So if we go into regular PC settings, first of all, there's um, a bit more stuff in here. It seems like they've been continuing to add control panel settings into the PC settings app. Um, which is this kind of modern style app that you have. Uh, so from the last build, we've already seen uh, Storage Sense, um, Battery Saver, uh, which is still not really working at the moment. Um, it's not really doing anything. Uh, update and Recovery, Ease of Access, um, a bunch of stuff in there. Um, there's a few more, let's see. Oh yeah, I'm thinking of the other one. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in here, and we've already kind of talked about um, some of the stuff that, that's in here. Um, so, uh, first of all, Storage Sense is the only thing I've only seen a, that I've ever that I've actually seen a difference in with these new settings. And that's actually it's actually showing you what's filling up your storage right at the moment, and it's uh, showing you by uh, by category. Um, and uh, I would imagine if I go into, say, apps and games here, it will actually show you by uh, storage there. <laughs> Thank you, Microsoft, for asking. Okay. Um, so, I mean, there's that. Uh, they've expanded that a little bit. Uh, save locations, um, you can choose to, to save stuff to various things. But So that's... That's all, you know, fairly standard. But now we've got this Z PC settings thing here. And first of all, in um, build uh, 9888, this Z PC settings is no longer there. So I would imagine a lot of the stuff that's in here that's not in PC settings gets moved over. Um, not a big difference, but it's interesting to note that they're using Z PC settings as a testing ground for new features. Um, see all these asterisks here? That seems to imply that these are things that are in development. Um, for, for instance, they have this pending or depreciated section. Um, this is the old app sizes uh, list, which, once again, if we go back into PC settings, go into storage sense, storage overview, and we go into apps and games, um, it's actually pretty quick at determining this stuff. It, it does, I mean, it doesn't look too different, but it does look a little different. 
and it's in a different section. So they're keeping some of the stuff there, um, like the, the, the old UIs, but uh, they're clearly planning on getting rid of this. Um, corners and edges. So, um, and by the way, that's not quite clear what is actually pending, what is depreciated here. Um, we don't really know. But these are all things that think that something will change with it. Um, so you can show Windows Store apps on taskbar, allow switching between recent apps. I think a lot of this stuff was already there. <clears throat> Disk space, obviously this has been replaced by Storage Center. This is the old disk space um, UI. Manage, um, this is, as far as I know, I think this has been replaced by, let's go back for a second. Let's see, there's a network. <clears throat> And you've got your manage stuff here, uh, workplace. So you've got a, a workplace join, home group stuff, proxy, airplane mode, connections. Um, a lot of stuff that we've seen in previous builds um, has been integrated in a little bit better UI. Um, data sense is all right here as well. Uh, there's not Not a lot. <laughs> Once again, this is the same data since we saw in the previous build. But uh, this is the old um, the old uh, connection settings that were in PC settings. Uh, the old home group stuff. Let me see here. I mean, that's the same exact home group stuff. It's just been moved to a different section. Uh, file storage. Camera roll. Oh, file storage. This is a, it's I guess for OneDrive. Um, camera. Actually, th I wonder if this, this is actually fairly new, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, oh, they've got this new OneDrive in here. Some settings are managed by your system administrator. So, yeah, this is a lot of old stuff that they just kind of moved into a place that they're going to get rid of. It's old data sense stuff. So is that, um, there's this section for OEM. Uh, there's really, no, there's nothing in there right now, um, but that is potentially a place for OEM to put um, their own specific settings to. So I'm assuming this is a pending thing um, that will probably be hidden from the user. But uh, it's kind of cool that, to see that you, they can actually add, OEMs can actually add their own settings directly into Windows rather than have their own um, stupid third-party apps uh, running on top of Windows. That is, honestly, I, it, that's actually a lot bigger deal than people are making it out to be because, um, once again, I, I mean, I've, I used to, I used to do a lot of work on OEM-built PCs and uh, the, the amount of crud that they put on computers to add their own settings and battery savings and whatever was obnoxious. So having their own place to put stuff within Windows is, is very helpful. Um, so privacy. Um, this There's some new stuff in here. Um, you can actually, uh, you can change um, the amount of information that gets accessed by different applications. Um, so, like your name, your picture, account info, advertising ID, smart screen filter, text suggestions, uh, website content. You can turn any of these on, off, whatever. Uh, location, uh, webcam, microphone. Um, there's uh, other devices that control your app access. Uh, nothing much going on there at the moment. And then there's this. Um, I think we we can pretty much guarantee at this point that we know that Cortana is coming to Windows 10. Uh, that's going to happen at some point. This is obviously a pending option here, but this is Cortana um, personal data implement or uh, collection. Um, yes, Cortana collects data. Uh, it doesn't really do anything with it. In fact, it says uh, encrypted encrypted packets. Um, 
uh, to for processing through um, Microsoft's Azure servers, and um, Microsoft's servers never actually see the data; it just sends specific queries. Um, all the the data is kept on the devices, at least in Windows Phone's case. Uh, this should be the same with here too, but um, you can um, clear your clear your data in any case. That's a and there will be probably some new privacy settings in there with future builds. <clears throat> um, I don't really notice uh, much of a difference with the update. Recovery. Um, ah, you can see that the difference there that they've changed from backup to, or from, well, it used to be file history, and now they're changing it to backup, uh, supposedly. So this looks like it's a pending change that they haven't fully implemented yet. Um, so that's interesting. File history is, is kind of a a weird name anyway. Um, they've kept it in, they've kept it in the actual uh, app here, but recovery, preview builds, Windows update, you know, that's all standard stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, like you can see the difference here, small difference. There is now a closed captioning option here. These are my caption settings. You can choose uh, your your caption color. Um, which this is an interesting setting. I I don't know um, where this closed captioning is going to end up coming into effect. I would assume this is just for um, any app that uses closed captioning, uh, Windows Media Player, etc. Um, but it's interesting that they're adding that in there. This is currently not, it, all the stuff in ZPC settings, by the way, is currently not enabled. Um, these are just future changes. So that's an important thing to, to keep in mind. I'm, I'm checking out a lot of these things in front of you and kind of looking at them, um, without really knowing much about them, but that's because... Um, you can't really test this stuff right now. It doesn't, none of the stuff actually in the CPC settings really works at the moment. Um, and that is a, a, that is an important note to keep in mind for build 9888. Um, as I said, the CPC settings is gone in build 9888, but uh, so are a lot of these options that are pending. Um, you can't even see them in that build. So, there's just little, little tiny changes here. Um, I don't really see much of a, of a difference here. But, accounts, um, which is also in here. Uh, yeah, so, uh, um, that will be a, a new setting supposedly going in there. Um, sign in options and whatever. Let's not do that at the moment. Um, so much of interesting stuff going in here. Uh, network and Wi Fi. Um, so, this is supposedly what they're going to replace their um, settings, or some of their settings with. Obviously this stuff is going to work. Um, it's airplane mode, wireless devices, mobile broadband is a new section there. Mobile hotspot, so you can actually turn on mobile hotspot mode if you have one built into your uh, device. Uh, data sense is going to get thrown in there. VPN, direct access. I'm not even sure what that is. But that's an option. Dial-up, Ethernet, proxy. All, all this network stuff uh, looks like it's going to get thrown into a network and Wi-Fi option, which is uh, instead of being in this, you know, network, data sense, it's kind of scattered all over the place. So they're, um, 
uh, they're they're making things a little bit cleaner that way, which is which is nice. Um, devices. Um, so this is this is going to include your mouse and trackpad or mouse and touchpad typing, autoplay, disk space. Um, which is interesting. That disk space is been getting thrown in there, but I guess um, if you're talking about external hard drive, flash drives, stuff like that, um, versus currently in PC settings. You have uh, search apps, uh, you have storage sense, you have stuff scattered all over the place. So this Z PC settings is, um, is interesting. I'm not going to click on this, but this is also where uh, your this is uh, where they've moved, well, copied um, their uh, um, your Windows information settings, like for instance. Um, a what build or a what um, version of Windows this is, your license key, um, computer name, all that kind of stuff. That was all previously in um, control panel. Let's see here. So that was all right here before. System settings. Um, that's what's in this about section. Um, so it's interesting to see them throw a lot of this stuff into um, into the actual this this metro mode. It seems like they're wanting to put everything in here and um, maybe eventually get rid of control panel. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to do it anytime soon though. So system. Um, this is this is a, one's actually really interesting. There's a lot of stuff in system. Um, but, uh, so for instance, um, you have display options, uh, notification settings. So if you go to your notification center here, um, there used to be a little settings box there, but not anymore. So this has your, your notification options, uh, search speech, um, storage sense is here as well, but there's nothing there. So I don't know if they're going to move that there or not. A lot of the stuff is, conf is a little confusing because they also have it um, in a certain way in devices. So maybe we'll put it there too. You'll be able to access stuff from multiple, di multiple different places. Power and sleep. Um, maps options. Uh, this... Uh, See, you can set your uh, default video player, music player, web browser, um, Windows Defender for Great Justice, whatever, whatever this is. This must be um, security settings. Uh, <laughs> it's a hilarious name. I, I, I couldn't believe when I saw that option. Uh, and then there'll also be some op optional features apparently um, as well uh, for you to add additional settings features or something currently doesn't do anything as you can see there's also an, another about thing here which will do, do the same thing as i told you about earlier where it gives you windows information product key information all that kind of stuff so like i said this uh it's this is a lot of stuff here but it looks like this is going to be the new design for PC settings. Um, they're going to have everything built into these uh, bigger menus named system, devices, network and Wi-Fi, personalization, etc. Um, and then they'll have some OEM settings at the bottom here. That makes a lot more sense than what is currently here. Because this is kind of a mess. Nobody wants to scroll on this menu. Nobody. I, I, there's just way too much stuff here. So it's good to see that they're they're putting it all in little menus here. The only thing I'm wor worried about is um, some of the stuff might be a little esoteric for people that they might not be able to find things as easily. Um, however, that's where I imagine the search box and the search box that's down here in uh, build 9888 is going to take an effect um, is that you can actually search for stuff within the settings menu so 
anyway, that's that's probably the biggest change is these or these uh, UI changes that they're making. Speaking of UI changes, look at this up here. This is what's called a hamburger menu. Um, hamburger because it has well a bun up top, a bun at the bottom, and then another thing in the middle. So I don't know. I didn't make it up. Um, but basically these three lines. If you remember correctly from Windows 8, if you've ever played with it, um, most modern apps have a little ellipsis dot 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 down the bottom, down here, or rather down here, because a lot of uh, Windows 8 modern apps uh, took up the entire screen, and, um, including your taskbar down here. And uh, this replaces that. And I find that really nice. Um, it was kind of counterintuitive having app settings down the bottom, um, especially in such a, a small ellipsis type of thing that's kind of hard to, to click on or tap on. Um, so this will be the new PC settings. So you can still click this and you get restore, minimize, maximize, close, etc. But this is going to have um, this is going to have app settings. So you can go full screen with this, in which case it will actually um, hide your, your task manager there. You can go up here and exit full screen. Uh, you can search, you can uh, share, you know, mail, OneNote, whatever, uh, scare, uh, share uh, screenshots, uh, print settings. So this is interesting because um, with Windows 8, all of this was in a charm over here. You'd have to go over here, move your mouse down, it would pull up the charms. Um, notice these icons, the same icons as the uh, as the charms. Search, share, devices, settings. Um, so they've completely replaced uh, the, those charms with this hamburger menu. Um, I think that's a little more intuitive than the charms. Oh, a lot more intuitive than the charms. The charms were not very intuitive at all. A lot of people didn't know what the heck those were, or how to get to them. This makes a bit more sense, and it's also much more visible. You, you look at the top here, um, a lot of people that have been using Windows for a long time know to look for file menus up at the top. So you look up here, and you're like, all right, there's the icon. This thing lights up. What is this? And then they'll go there and see these settings. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's also present in the PC settings. Um, it's present in pretty much every modern app um, that I can see. Uh, but it's not present in all apps. For instance, um, here in uh, Internet Explorer, it doesn't work. Uh, Windows Explorer, there's uh, still a file menu here. Um, but uh, these desktop apps don't really have that, um, don't have a lot of those charm type things. So this is mainly going to be for, let's see, let's go to travel for a second, for this type of stuff, for these modern-ish apps that now run on the desktop. Um, I'm curious to see if they end up moving some of that functionality into here somehow. Um, like you have these these kind of things here. Maybe they'll put a hamburger menu in here. Um, we don't really know. So that's interesting. The final piece that, uh, possibly final piece that I'm going to talk about is um, that if you remember from the last video I did, uh, MKV file support was added to Windows Media Player. If you don't know what MKV files are, um, let's probably because you've never torrented anything before. Um, MKV is like the Malashnikov uh, file format. It's something Russian. I probably pronounced it very wrong. Um, but it's a uh, it's a open source file format for a video, um, open source codecs, that is used pretty much exclusively by uh, the open source community who is taking things, converting the file type, torrenting them off. Um, your general, when, if you get, um, if you buy video files um, from, 
iTunes, Xbox Video, whatever, um, you're generally going to get MP4 or AVI or something like that. Uh, MKV is is a, a, a bit more obscure file format, but um, if you've ever torrented a file before and you try to open up a, and you realize that it was an MKV afterwards, and you're trying to play it in Windows Media Player so you can stream it to your Xbox, um, you know, as happens to me on occasion, um, you'll know how frustrating it is to, to not have that file supported by Windows Media Player. A lot of people prefer to use VLC. Um, VLC is fine, but um, it's very difficult to actually stream um, content that's being played in VLC over a network. Um, I, I like to be able to open it in like my Surface and send it over to my Xbox so I can watch it on the TV, uh, rather than you know trying to set up a network share or something like that. So before um, in the previous build, MKV was technically supported, but you had to manually associate it with Windows Media Player, and even then it would say, "Oh, this is not supported." Well, now it is officially supported. Um, this is, as you can see, item type MKV video. Um, it's an MKV, opens with Windows Media Player. I haven't done anything to this uh, file to, to make that happen. I just downloaded it, and uh, this, is a, this is a test file. I'm not even sure what this is, actually. It's a test file I downloaded from the, from the web. So, oh, that's all right. This is a Eve something or other. Um, so this is an MKV file uh, that is playing currently. I don't think there's much in the way of sound anyway. Um, but uh, this does support sound as well, and um, there is a since this is a recorded video or from someone else, uh, it doesn't have a lot of metadata in there. But um, this file support also extends to um, metadata and uh, thumbnails. So uh, if you download a, a MKV file from your torrent site of F choice and uh, there is metadata included. Um, Windows Media Player will see that metadata and will show a thumbnail on here and show you um, the you know publisher information and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's really cool. I, I like that a lot. I like the fact that they're actually supporting MKV, even though it's it's clearly a file format that's used for the only reason it's used is for illegitimate purposes, but it is an open source file format that's favored by a lot of people, and it's it's important to, to support everything you can. Um, so, um, supposedly, I've been hearing that FLAC support is also coming. If you don't know what FLAC is, is uh, a uh, lo um, lossless audio codec. Um, that means that um, you hear literally everything. There's no compression on the audio file. There's nothing that you will miss when listening to it. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of super serious audio files swear by FLAC because you hear literally everything in in the audio file, and and they swear that there's a difference. And maybe there, maybe there is. Um, but in any case, that is coming in future builds as well. So that's exciting. Currently, it's not supported. So don't even try. Uh, FLAC will, will not work on, on this, unfortunately. Another change of note <clears throat> is that uh, SnapAssist is back. Uh, if you recall, SnapAssist was removed from the last build of Windows 10 for <clears throat> some reason. I'm not really sure why. Um, however, it is back. So uh, in case you don't remember, let's open up a couple desktop apps. Uh, SnapAssist is the uh, is something that um, since they're they're adding the original uh, desktop snap back to uh, Windows 10 <clears throat> from Windows 7 since it was replaced uh, in Windows 8 by um, their uh, app snap type of type of thing. Um, Basically, Snap Assist is now a, a new way to um, basically help you figure out how to, to snap your apps and figure out if you want to snap things together. So, um, just to demonstrate again, <clears throat> um, you can snap 
uh, half size like you can in Windows 7. You just bring it to the edge and it will snap half size. However, when it does, it will give you the option of, hey, would you like to snap other things that are open? Um, this will include any apps, uh, any other programs um, running in the background, <clears throat> anything that's running, it'll ask you if you want to snap uh, to this as well. And um, so you click one, and it'll snap it half size right next to it. Um, just automatically snaps it for you. So that is back, uh, which is nice. Um, and then you can also do, you can also do quarter snap as well. So bring it to the corner here, you see how that line just kind of sets up. And uh, it will ask you if you want to quarter snap something else next to it. So that is back. Uh, the, the one change, which I won't really demonstrate here, um, <clears throat> uh, there's, no, there's no real reason to, to, to demonstrate it fully, but um, Snap Assist now works um, on in multi-monitors as well. So if, say, this is a secondary monitor and you have this in some other monitor over there, um, when you go to Snap, it will ask you any, uh, any applications you have open in uh, other monitors as well. So it's kind of cool, uh, but uh, Snap Assist is back. I'm not sure why they got rid of it in the first place, but there must be some sort of behind-the-scenes technical reason for it. The, so the final change I want to mention um, with this build is that the uh, animations have been a little bit smoothed out. Um, supposedly they changed a little bit more in future builds. Um, but uh, it, yeah, if you remember from previous um, videos that I've done, the animations were a little heavy. Um, you'd have these crazy just like expand and, and it, like the, for instance, if you maximized it, it would it would do this whole you know flipping thing, you know, uh, expanding into the in, into the ether here, and uh, it, it was just a little heavy-handed, um, and it seemed a little ugly. Well, they've cleaned it up quite a bit now. Uh, as you can see, there are very minimal transitions. Uh, it's enough to tell you, oh, it's kind of gone over there, and then poof, pop pops back up. So. Um, it's kind of nice to see that. Uh, they're still playing with the animations, though. Uh, I've seen a couple different animation styles from uh, future builds that they're that they're dealing with. Um, so it'll be interesting to see once the consumer preview comes out what they're going to do with that. So that's all the changes that are currently in uh, the Windows 10 technical preview as of build 9879. Um, obviously, there are uh, other uh, changes coming up um, in build 9888, um, including um, in your PC settings, there's going to be a search box up here. Um, there will supposedly be an option to turn this into a search box. Um, potentially, there is actually a, um, there used to be a way to go into regedit and make that change yourself um, in this build, but uh, since they updated the build, that option seems to be gone from regedit. Um, so either they got rid of that as a plan or something, um, but uh, that is no longer an option. Um, previously, there there was a search box. You could you could enable a search box down here instead of the search uh, icon, and um, but it didn't work. In fact, um, the, the search would just kind of hang. It wouldn't actually pull anything up. So they right, rightfully got rid of that option, I guess, because uh, they may not even implement it anyway. So um, anyway, I am interested to see what they end up doing with the consumer preview in January, um, but I am guessing that they're going to do something to OneDrive because currently nobody likes how OneDrive works. Um, and uh, so I have a feeling they're, they're going to have to do something, some sort of hybrid between selective search and smart files. Um, even if they just allow you to enable smart files, I think that would be the best thing to do, even if they make it a, a like default to turn it off, 
whatever. Um, but uh, I'm going to imagine they're going to do that. They're going to throw Cortana in here. Um, PC settings will officially become this uh, without the pending or depreciated and without... Well, they'll probably keep the OEM in there for preview builds at least. Um, and uh, it sounds like they're going to um, they're going to refine the animations even more and keep playing with them a little bit. We'll be I'll be interested to see what the final animations are gonna are gonna look like. Uh, and then finally, they're gonna add uh, they're probably gonna add Flack support to Windows Media Player for your uh, lossless audio files. Um, at the moment, um, Windows 10 is looking fairly good. Uh, the only problem I have with it is OneDrive, and uh, once again, because there's such an outcry about it, they're going to do something about it. I can guarantee you that. Um, but uh, so far, I'm liking I'm liking the way Windows Windows 10 is looking, how it's running. Um, it seems to be doing just fine. I like the uh, I like the new icons that they have going on. Um, uh, it, it it seems it seems pretty seems pretty good. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, I will close this review out, and uh, thank you for watching this, and be sure to keep up with uh, mikesgoodstuff.com, um, where uh, I will talk about not just Windows stuff, but anything that's good, honestly. Um, I've talked a lot about the Star Wars trailers and uh, various other things. Um, but I will keep you up to date as I see official builds coming out. Once again, I'm not going to talk about nine, build 9888, but I will talk about... Um, the next official build they come out with um, probably in January. So until then, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later.